Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to JD Radio. Yeah, mm, that's right. That's right. Consistency? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, I am enjoying doing this. This is kind of like my own thera- thera- therapeutic uh, process once a week. Um, it's not my therapy sessions. I pay $125 for those once a week, and uh, they are eating me alive, but they're worth it. Um, with that, hey, welcome to a new episode. Let's start off like we did on the last one. This might just be uh, what we do. How you doing? Mental he- mental health check-in or even just life, liberties. W- what's going on with you? Are you okay? Are you are you all right? Are you doing well? I've, I've been really um, overwhelmed lately uh, this past week and somewhat stressed. Yeah, definitely stressed. Um, stressed out little depression, little anxiety here and there. And I don't want to, I don't want to be like a Debbie Downer whenever I start my podcast. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm okay. You know, these are very much uh, first world, I'd say issues, but I, I have been just a little bit out of sorts if, if I could explain it in a better way. Uh, more or less because me and my wife are trying to find an apartment right now or a new place to live. Uh, I'd love to say it's going to be a house, but I, I don't, uh, I don't we, can, we can't afford one yet, <laughs> but one day soon, actually soon, hopefully in the next year, two years will be good. Uh, you know, pandemic has put everybody a little bit backwards, but also we're waiting for the market to possibly either decline or crash because we're in a recession right now and things are going to be cheaper in a little bit. Uh, but me personally, and you all, I hope you're doing well. Please let me know in the comments, uh, leave a review if you want about how you're feeling personally this week. But for me, uh, yeah, yeah, I definitely have been feeling like overwhelmed a little bit, just stressed out. And, uh, I would say that I've kind of felt like this longer than trying to look for a new place, but also you never know. It's it's just it's just a feeling. It's a feeling that's in the back of your brain and you can kind of feel it's kind of it kind of feels like butterflies, you know, where you have the butterflies because, you you know, you're maybe into someone when you're, I don't know, a teenager or high school or whatever it is, or even in your, in your young 20s, whatever they call it, you know, uh, adrenaline, emotions, nervousness. And I've just had that for like the last week or two. And it's so annoying but at the same time it's part of life and I feel like it's something that just hits you when you're like for me in your 30s personally I think once you hit your 30s and this could become a stand-up bit I feel like once you hit your 30s your your brain is just like hey man I've been suppressing this stuff for way too long (laughs) just shoving shoving terrible traumatic moments in your life to the side until you're old enough to have to deal with it you know because when you're younger you know you you just you got all kinds of distractions that can get you out of there but when you get to the point where you have so much time to yourself that you can actually think about it uh yeah this is this is what happens you start spiraling um but i hope you all are doing well (laughs) i hope you all are doing well and i hope you all are uh feeling good this week and are living your best lives and you know are just healthy and staying as positive as you can during a pandemic because i know that i'm trying to just like anyone else um yeah so uh i was gonna say me and my wife we're we're uh, you know we're currently looking for a place to live uh our place is nice but unfortunately it's been like broken into a few times uh our garage and our mail room have been broken into and it's, you know, you don't feel safe. I want to say that a majority of it is because we're in a pandemic and people are desperate, which is understandable. But uh, it sucks, you know, especially when they're breaking through your car just to make it messy. Like someone broke into my car and just rummaged around a car that I don't drive that often at all. Uh, it's it's kind of just like a like it's, it's just a car that I've owned for a long time since I was younger. Uh, and I. I just was annoyed that they kind of just rummaged through nothing. I was like, wait, could you at least, if you're going to make a mess, could you take the mess and put it back? 
<laughs> That's all I can think of. Because they took all this stuff out of the center console, which was already a mess in the center console, but they just left it on the chair. I was like, look, I know you're in a hurry, but like, put it back. <laughs> just take it all back in a big pile in your hands and just dump it back in the center console. I don't want to do it. I don't care. There's nothing else in the car. And the stuff that was in the car, I was like, I'm surprised they didn't steal it. There was like a, like an iPhone charger. I would have taken a free iPhone charger, me at least. There was, I think I had one AirPod. <laughs> Had one AirPod, they could have sunk, they could have synced those up to another AirPod somewhere. Missed opportunity, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Getting robbed isn't fun. It feels you you feel very uh, violated. You know, everybody knows what that. Well, not everybody knows, but a lot of people do know. I know now, and actually, I've been <laughs> that's happened before. Um, so yeah, basically, that's how I'm doing this week. And speaking of weeks. Speaking of this podcast, I do appreciate all y'all who uh, watched the last one. 2,000? Uh, excuse me. I think we got like a, I don't, across all platforms. I think we got like 200 listens. I'm not sure. Maybe like two, maybe like 2,000 views on YouTube and like 100 plus listens on whatever uh, platform you like to listen to, I believe. I'm checking my analytics as we talk. Um, but it's appreciated. Uh, we had 148 listeners. Hey. That's uh, more people than I talk to in person right now. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you. Uh, also, I see I have, a very, I have a very large male demographic. That's dope. Nothing against the males. Uh, ladies, where you at? Yo, pull up. Listen, I've probably got to reach out to you all more somehow. Um, I, you know, I think it's just one of those things when I read analytics and it's like I got like all boys listening to me. I'm like, oh, that's cool. All the boys, yeah, you know, but it, wait a lay with the ladies. I don't know. I feel like sometimes it's nice to just mix it up. Ladies, uh, you know, whatever, whatever you identify as non-binary, uh, all that stuff. So I, these are these are things that I just thought about. I was also going to say, because I wrote notes for today's episode, which is uh, different. Um, wanted to say thank you through those analytics, whatever. Great. Also. Um, oh, that's what I was going to say. Consistency wise. I don't, I don't have a, I probably have to do a, like a, I probably would have to do like a tally on YouTube because that's where I like post the videos of these. And I feel like when the video drops, that's when people know the podcast is up. Would you, would you rather me post this once a week on a specific day and a specific time or would you, well, I would still do this, but would you rather have multiple episodes a week uh, that are dedicated to different topics and just maybe how I'm feeling and uh, maybe, maybe the video, maybe the, excuse me, maybe the podcast is slightly shorter depending on how, or maybe it's not, it doesn't matter. Maybe I'm just asking you, do you want more podcasts or do you want one podcast a week? Would you like one or at a max, I would say three, like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And that's not always guaranteed. I would only say that because this past week I finished my podcast and uploaded it um, like it's only been four days, which is funny. It feels like it's been almost a week, but I uploaded my episode. I talked about Lola Bunny. I talked about Vishon, talked about that funny stuff. But then like a day later, uh, the the Meghan Markle, um, Prince Harry, Oprah interview happened and I sat through the whole thing. A lot of people didn't even know where to find it and watch it. I randomly found it via cbs.com it was on the cbs app for free for like the first day i don't know if it still is and i watched the entire thing and that's what we're going to get into today but i was originally going to discuss it literally within the same day i guess it was viral which probably would have been better for my analytics because more people were searching for it what but who cares but yeah i was going to record and upload an episode for like wednesday i think i posted this last episode last monday so is that something that you all would like? I mean, I need feedback is what I'm trying to say. I know that we're a small group of people just kind of hanging out and talking and spending time with each other. And I appreciate those of you who are here. Uh, but let me know your feedback on that. Would you like if something happens between like this episode and the next, I would give them like a day buffer, maybe two days. But, you know, think if if it was like three episodes a week, like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, not guaranteed, or two episodes a week, like a Monday and a Thursday. Because, you know, there's stuff that happens between Monday and Friday all the time where it's like, oh, man, you know, now I'm late to the topics if I talk about it a week later. Or do you not care? And you don't mind if I talk about topics a week later when they're not trending and not viral and not in the moment. 
these are things that I'm asking you. Sometimes I might not even talk about topics. Sometimes we might just sit back and ramble. Ramble, ramble, ding, dong. <laughs> Why is that funny? That's not funny. <laughs> it's stupid. Um, these are ideas. I personally think that this is going to be my most consistent project in the next year because I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying just having this conversation one-sided technically until we get to the the back end of every episode with the questions by the way you don't have to just ask me questions you could tell me about like a story you could ask for advice you could tell me about an embarrassing moment and maybe how you would how your excuse me your curiosity about how i would uh handle it please feel free to well don't spout off ignorance but please feel free to ask away or even if you have a statement maybe if you have something that you want to get off of your chest and maybe you just want somebody to listen i'm here for you you can do that by clicking the link in the description below to send voice messages via anchor don't forget all right um what other questions that i have oh i have another question for you i usually do these episodes on youtube uh, youtube.com slash JD with, I don't know my own URL, whatever the link is in the description, <laughs> just type in JD Witherspoon. It comes up or just type in JD radio. Do you like the background music on these? I know a lot of podcasts don't have it. And I know that that's usually the norm, but for me on the video portion specifically, I, I don't know why I enjoy the light background music. Sometimes, sometimes I don't. Sometimes it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter, actually. It's actually more about the conversation because there's all a bunch of dialogue that's filling up the, the, the dead air and the dead space in the, in the video and the audio. The audio is always going to be no background music because that's got to be super annoying if you're an audiophile. And I know for me, if I'm listening to a podcast, I wouldn't want to hear somebody playing music in the background during the audio version. But for some reason, when it's a video, it kind of keeps me more focused. Let me know what you think. I will be putting up a poll or two either on YouTube or probably YouTube because that's the main place where I think people listen and tune into this. I'm going to soon uh, clips channel link just link in the description. I'm going to be uploading clips soon. <laughs> I need to hurry up because I'm creating more episodes than I have clips now and I'm going to be behind because I would like to get clips from the first episode that I did and post them there. But hey, again, this is one of those projects where this is uh, very much something that can be maybe successful in the future or not successful at all. And this could be a complete waste. Not a waste. No, because if I'm enjoying it, it's not a waste of my time. But it could be something that doesn't really amount to anything. And it's just like maybe a personal little connection with me and the few people who listen. I have no idea what this can turn into. I'm enjoying it, though, and I'm glad that I'm, like, reviving a channel that I put so much work into when I was younger because this is the channel. This is the one I started on. Uh, if you'd like to actually go back and watch all of my content, it's still there. I, I re uh, I unprivated or un I had them all unlisted so you could still see them in playlists. But I re made all my videos public again or not all of them, but um, the ones with like basically the history of my con my channel uh, from beginning till now doing a podcast. So if you want to go back and watch them, check them out. If you want to go watch specific things like a. Uh, you know, Miles and Freestyles, I have that in its own playlist. I'm trying to get that back going, but I mean, who's going to get in a car with me and not be afraid of <laughs> the pandemic? So there's that. And uh, whatever else I have on my channel. So feel free to go through and enjoy it. So, okay, I, I, I asked you the question about the background music. We talked about how often this podcast is uploaded and oh, I finally found my my groove i feel like for my thumbnails i know someone on the last video actually could i can i pull this uh up hopefully this doesn't blare with the with the audio of the last episode we're gonna just gonna click it mute it okay cool uh where are the comments 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 someone in the comments appreciate you for mentioning this but they were like put your face in the thumbnail <laughs> and i was like okay i'll do it um uh trying to look for it right now looking for it looking for it looking for it i'm not finding it <laughs> uh i'm not oh uh no no, not that one. 
Someone said that my, it was Shady Fungus said that I'm subscribed to you and Philip DeFranco and you have similar thumbnails. This was before I found my groove on what I wanted it to look like. And then I was like, oh yeah, it kind of does look like Philip DeFranco's. And then, uh, and then they were like, oh, they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, great minds think alike. And I was like, oh yeah, I mean, I know him personally. I've known him for like X amount of years. He's a cool friend of mine. And they were like, oh, that's dope. Um, again, no idea where this uh <laughs> I don't know where I don't know where this comment went. I'm scrolling and I'm not finding it, but let's not lose track. Thank you to whoever recommended that though. Um I'm still looking for it. I'm sorry. This is this is getting uh, obnoxious. But thank you to whoever mentioned that in the last video or audio podcast, sorry. I get always I always get a little flustered when I do these uh <laughs> but yeah I feel like I, oh my god I feel like I found my groove now I've got like me in the thumbnail I've got like the topics over my shoulders kind of and then I've got the name of the podcast above my head so it's like a mixture of a few different thumbnails that I've seen before and also I kind of just like made it up off off of what I could think of so let me know what you think I might throw up some thumbnails right now so you can see the vibe I'm sure you could just go to my page maybe I won't put them in the video because I'm a little lazy when it comes to editing this uh <laughs> so so let me know what you think I hate that I do this by the way for those who are watching the video on YouTube I hate when podcasters grab the microphone to reassess and readjust where they're sitting it's like just leave the mic alone just leave it alone Come to it. Don't make it come to you. It's weird. It's unnecessary. And I hate when people do this. <laughs> they, they, they move it around so much. It's like they can't. They can't. I don't know. I don't know why I hate that. But then I do it. So I'm a hypocrite. Um, there's that. All right. Um, cool. I talked about stuff that I guess matters. Podca podcast clips coming soon. I need to edit them. I seriously need to. And it's also just very easy to edit them. I need to edit them and then post them on social platforms that I have a bigger following on. So Instagram, uh, Facebook, my TikTok. I mean, well, yeah, I guess kind of like in the sense of people, more engagement. Uh, Twitter, um, uh, where, wherever else. Specifically Instagram. You know who I watch a lot, and I mentioned this on my last podcast. I love, man, I don't know why I love this, but I love Sarah Silverman's podcast. Uh, shout out to Sarah Silverman. She is hilarious. And also, uh, I met her once. We played in a basketball game that was, uh, there was this, like, there's, like, this basketball comedy league uh, for stand-up comedians in Los Angeles, or there was before COVID. And uh, I played against her team, and I was cooking, boy. <laughs> I was, I was, I was, I was shaking them up, but she was there and she was a lot shorter than I remember. I was like, oh, Sarah Silverman's kind of short, which is just random. And I'm not sure why I'm saying it out loud, but you know, she's very funny to me. I enjoy her perspective and how she views the world and the way that she takes, cause she has her question and answer moments uh, on her podcast where a lot of people call in, uh, I guess they call it the voicemail segment. And it's funny when you know, she'll, she'll call like a lot of like guys will call in and say that they don't like her perspective or that they do girls will call in and they'll either be a, also be against her perspective or be uh, very liberal and very, uh, uh, in, you know, different to, to what I think I've heard before and have like very interesting points of views. I like the podcast. I just like her podcast. And I thought I would shout it out on my podcast because it's a fun one. It's a good one. You know who else has uh, got a great podcast? And now I'm just losing listeners and viewers because I'm sending them to other people. <laughs> uh, Melissa Villasenor, who's also a friend of mine from SNL. Uh, very cool person. Very great with impressions. Um, love her work. We, I met her at, I met her actually on my plane home from New York because I went to New York to watch the uh, the episode of Saturday Night Live that happened in uh, this fall of or winter of 2019, the Eddie Murphy episode. I was there. Yeah, I was I was in the crowd. I was in like the third or second row uh, because I had a meeting uh, over there at 
whatever you want to call it uh at rockefeller center should i do i should talk about that that's an interesting story <laughs> should I, I should tell y'all stories i should do that should we get into that now maybe i'll save it for another episode so that it could be the it can be like the whole purpose of the episode but um i had a meeting at SNL to meet with Lauren Michaels back in not too far back in the day, like two years ago, almost a uh, year and a half ago. So this is like fall. It's like December 2019. Uh, and it was a great meeting. Shout out to Lauren. Lauren, if you ever watch this, I, I hope you're doing well, man. <laughs> I sat down with him. Pers- it was just me and him. It wasn't like I just met him. It was like uh, I had a recommendation from a family friend to meet him. And then he was like, sure, have him come to my office. And, you know, I'm a working uh, actor and entertainer. So, uh, that's kind of huge. And I know a lot of people who don't get the opportunity to sit down and talk with Lauren Michaels. And, um, it was a very engaging conversation he was really dope. And I will get into specifics on a future episode because that was a segue into something that didn't, it wasn't supposed to happen. I kind of just rambled into that. Uh, if you want more story time podcasts, I can give that to you. I feel like now people are going to complain and be like, tell the freaking story about Lauren Michaels. <laughs> sure. Let's just do that. Let's just do that. You don't, you don't, have, you, 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 this is a podcast. You, you don't have to, there's no rules. There's no rules to this. All right. So let's talk about it. Um, this is fall of 2019. Uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit after my dad passes away, which, you know, sucks. I hate talking about it. I mean, I don't, I don't hate talking about it. I hate that he's not here. I'm not going to get depressed. On right now, at least, and I'm not trying to like deflect my my depression or whatever. I just I just personally don't feel like talking about it. Uh, but he passed away, and in his passing, um, I had like a few people reach out to me, and one of them is actually my godfather. I don't bring this up because I never I never care to bring things like this up. The same way a lot of you who knew me before my dad passed away, uh, just you, you maybe you never knew that that was my dad, like because I don't. I don't, I'm not a person who likes, I don't know. I, I'm not a person who has ever mentioned my father in the sense of, Hey, you know what my dad does. And for those who have been here prior to him passing away, you know, this, and when you did see him, you were like, what the fuck? <laughs> and that that's usually the response I get from like friends growing up who I would invite to my house, but never really mention it because that's just my dad's life. And I never thought to myself, Oh yeah, I should probably mention that my dad is like a entertainer. No, I just, I never, I never thought to do that. I have friends who have known me for five years prior to him passing away, who called me after he passed away. Like, that's your dad. Why did you not tell me? I'm like, you never told me who your dad was. <laughs> like, I like, I don't know. That's just, to me, I don't like bringing it up as a point of conversation because I don't think that adds value to me and my personality. Like, sure. Once you get to know me deeper, if you ask me, what do your parents do? I'll be like, oh, uh, my mom's an artist and my dad thinks he's funny. That's what I used to tell people. (laughs) And if you get to meet him, great. It's not something that is, you know, my identity. Like my dad's career is not part of my identity. I, I, I love him. I, and I, uh, am happy and proud of everything he did. And also I'm proud of everything I do. Even though when I was younger, I never wanted to do entertainment. I just kind of randomly fell into it. Like not because of him or anyone in my family. I, I just did it because people kept telling me I was an interesting guy and that I had like funny ideas and funny and, you know, or just entertaining an entertaining perspective is what I would call it. So yeah, you know, and, and it was, it was a very, just a normal relationship. I think a lot of people watch my dad on television and think, Oh man, you had the, you had the great, you had, you had my TV dad as a dad. And I was like, that is not how he acts in person. (laughs) That that's a character on television or in a movie. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, there's a very, there's very much a disconnect between the people who think they think they know my dad and me because I've lived with him for 30 years plus. So, you know, there's that part, but let's get back to the story. Um, so my godfather is David Letterman. 
I never bring this up because what does it matter? It doesn't mean anything. It's it doesn't. It's not some sort of golden ticket into Hollywood. It's not some sort of the door is open for you so you can take it. And that's the same with my own father. Uh, just because he was an entertainer and I randomly started becoming an entertainer did not mean he was going to become Will Smith for me and I was not going to become Jaden. And he was going to be like, hey, son, let's do a movie together. No, that's not how it works. I mean, well, it could work like that. But my dad is, was very focused on his own career. He was not concerned with what I was trying to pursue. <laughs> he was just like, oh, I'm proud of you, boy. All right, good for you. <laughs> and I'd be like, all right, thank you, man. That's, that's cool. That's enough. Um, but my, my godfather, though, uh, David Letterman, he, uh, we talk. You know, we talk every other month, maybe. Uh maybe like i mean maybe twice a month uh even you know more now that my dad passed away because that was one of his really good friends i was like my dad one of my dad's best friends and he called me randomly one time and he just asked me what i was doing with my like life and my career and i was like oh i was like oh man you know uh, i was like well i host and I, i'm like i was like i've been acting for like the last decade and and he had watched this show that I hosted on Facebook watch called confetti for those who know, shout out to y'all. Let's get ready to confetti, <laughs> um, which was a game show. I hosted like 200 plus episodes of it. And my godfather saw it and him and my dad would like bond over it and be like, look at that. JD's kind of like you, Dave, he's got the knack for the teleprompter. He knows how to read those things. And my dad was terrible at that is what he told me. He was like, I can never do that. JD. He was like, I'm, that's a very, very unique skill set to have built up. And I was like, Oh, Oh, cool. I didn't know that. Thank you, dad. Um, but you know, when he passed away, David Letterman calls me and he's all like, Hey man, uh, is there anything I can do for you? Is there anything that you need help with in your career? He's like, you know, I don't know. He's like, and Dave is so funny. Cause he's very much like a, ver a, like, he's like a white version of my dad and I'm not trying to bring race into it. It's just, you know, it's like, they grew up in the same era and they were friends and they came up at the comedy store here in Los Angeles and they have a very similar mentality about life where they're just doing what they know how to do as well as they can. And they don't want to change things in any way, shape or form. <laughs> like they don't want to conform to the newer ways of the world. They don't want to get on these social media apps. They, you know, they much rather would have an assistant set it up for them. Similar to like my dad, I helped him set up all his social media and whatnot. Um, and yeah, so he just asked me what I was up to. And I told him I had just finished hosting that show, uh, Confetti, on Facebook. And I told him, like, you know, I do social media stuff. I told him I'm voice acting on two animated series on Adult Swim, which are laser, or excuse me, on, well, actually, you yeah, know, two on Adult Swim, which are Laser Wolf, The Jellies. I told him I was, like, working on Fuse TV. I was an, a creative consultant for a television show. And, you know, I'm telling him all these things, and he's just like, oh, well, you sound like you've got it figured out. Like, do you, is there anything I can do for you? And I was like, I don't know. I told him I wanted to get into late night. I could see myself being a late night host in the future, similar to like a Jimmy Fallon, a J Jimmy Kimmel, a Col Colbert, Trevor Noah, uh, you know, uh, him, similar to Dave, because he was, to me, he was, he was my favorite, you know, Jay Leno, uh, Arsenio. Uh, I, would, I would love to, in the next decade, book, uh, you know, or, or audition to be someone like that, because I feel like I'm a very interesting guy i'm really good at having conversations with people i can read a teleprompter <laughs> or cue cards um and yeah i i just kind of told him like i just kind of told him what i was up to and random stuff and then here's the funny thing here's where it gets weird it got not weird but interesting um i told him all this and then he was like all right cool man well you know i'll I'll take it into, I'll think about it. And uh, he didn't even, th he just, there was nothing to think about. He was just like, well, I'm glad he's like, I'm proud of you for doing all the things you've done so far. And if you need anything, just call me. And I was like, for sure. We end our conversation. We hang up the phone and I texted him after. Cause I forgot about something. I was like, Oh, by the way, on a text message, like boop, boop, boop. I was like, by the way, I also would like love to do SNL. Not in the sense that, oh, man, I'm a diehard improv SNL fan. I got to be on it. And, you know, it's a it's a thing that I I have to do it to get to the next level. There's a lot of people that I know like that who are dying to be kind of like sworn into that uh, club. I personally would love it, but I I am not I'm not going to lie and act like 
I'm not going to lie and act like it's an end all be all for my career. I would love to do it. I would love to get on that show because I think I'm very funny, entertaining. I can do voices. I, uh, you know, I do impressions and characters. But if it doesn't happen, no big deal. But I kind of just texted that to him in passing. I was like, hey, you know, I'd love to do SNL maybe in the future. Cool. That was it. I didn't think anything of it. I was like, oh, it was great talking to my godfather. It's kind of, it felt like talking to my dad. It felt nice to have a conversation with someone that I I haven't talked, don't talk to that consistently. And he reminds me of someone who's missing in my life now. So then like a week goes by and I get a random phone call from his assistant, David Letterman's assistant. And his assistant calls me and she's like, hey, what's up, JD? Um, this is Mary. And I'm like, oh, Mary. And she's like, Dave's assistant. I'm like, oh, hey, how are you? And I, I have met her before, but I didn't recognize her voice. And she was like, oh, I'm good. You know, um, she was like, I got, she was like, so I spoke with Dave and he said he talked to you recently. So I've got uh, Lauren Michaels office. Uh, I got Lauren Michaels number here for you. And I was like, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> and she was like, yeah, like Dave said, he spoke with you and you mentioned that you wanted to do SNL. And he recently was at some like dinner banquet and he saw Lauren there and, you know, him and Lauren have known each other for 40 years. So he just like talked you up to him or something and mentioned how you're a talented dude and how, you know, he supports your career and he thinks that you guys should meet. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, wait, what, what are you talking about? And and then uh, she was like, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I have no idea. But she was like, but Lauren said yes and told he they told us to have you reach out to him. So do you want his number or not? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like, sure, I guess. Yeah, thank you. I'll take that right now. And then she was like, all right, cool. Here's here's the information and this and that. And I told my wife and she started bugging. She was like, what the fuck? What, what is happening? <laughs> and it was crazy in the sense, it was crazy in the sense of like how networking and having connections and also knowing, you know, being, being fortunate enough to be, you know, my father's son and have somewhat of a personal connection to the people that he grew up with just kind of came towards me, you know, not, not in the sense of like a glow up or, uh, uh, like, you know, put me on type of situation. Just, it was just unique how I randomly mentioned that in passing in a text message after we talked. And then I started, and then I got this phone call. So then I uh, took the number and I called and I actually have this on video because I was going to vlog it and upload it. And in the future, if I'm ever on SNL, then we'll <laughs> we'll go back to this podcast and that clip and that thing, and I'll I'll see show you the moment. Um, but yeah, I called and I spoke with his assistant, and his assistant was like, "Hey, yeah, nice to meet you. Um, so you know, Lauren said he'd love to meet you. Uh, are you available? Are you available this month to uh stop by the offices? Now, mind you, the offices are in New York. I live in L.A." <laughs> <laughs> and I told them I live in LA and they were like, well, he'll be in LA in January or you could come by in December. And I look at my wife and I'm like, what do I do? She was like, you tell them that you're available to come by any goddamn time. <laughs> so I was like, I like, you know, I was like, oh yeah. I was like, I'll be in New York in like a two, two and a half weeks. You know, I got some stand up comedy gigs coming up and I obviously didn't. I, I do. I did get a chance to actually hit some clubs with my, uh, with my boy, Jesus Trejo. Uh, cause he was doing, um, I think stand up, stand up NY. And, uh, I don't think he, I don't, we hung around the comedy cellar, but I don't think uh, he was there, but you know, I was like, yes, I will be in that area. And then she was like, cool, let me get back to you with a date. They get back to me with a date. I, me and my wife book book tickets uh, to go out there and we end up going out there and I'm trying to think about how this all went down. We, we, my, I had a, my meeting was like on, it was actually on the same, what was it? It was the night before it was, it was on a Friday. So they booked me for a Friday uh, at five 30 to come by Rockefeller center and sit down and just talk with Lauren. And it was the same Friday before the Saturday with the Eddie Murphy episode where he came back and he played all his characters, Gumby and all that stuff. 
and he did uh, uh, the Mr. Rogers skit. And we get there. Uh, I'm sitting. We're in this hotel. We're hanging out. It's a great, fun time. It's cold. It was pre-COVID. I mean, COVID was probably still going. COVID, COVID was probably going around, but I don't think anybody was talking about it. <laughs> so, so yeah. Uh, basically. Uh, I I have my 5.30 p.m. meeting. Um, I go to Rockefeller Center. They they take me up the elevator. They sit me down in this little mini lobby next to Lauren's office. And then I sit down with them. And uh, we talked for what was a good 45 minutes. And uh, I think everyone has a story. Well, a lot of celebrities. I'm not a celebrity. But a lot of celebrities have stories about sitting down with Lauren. And the funny thing is that he doesn't even sit down with the people who are on his show sometimes. Like, you know, you'll be a cast member on the show and never get a chance to have a one-on-one with him. Not necessarily everybody, but I've heard those stories. Um, I've heard, like, Tina Fey's story about him. And it was all very interesting. But here's mine. (laughs) So I sat down. And I sit in the room and he's very straightforward. And he also has this tray of popcorn that he has in his office. He looks at me first and he's like, want some popcorn? And I was like, no, I'm good. And according to other people, (laughs) people have told me, you didn't take the popcorn, did you? (laughs) And I was like, no, why? They were like, that's a red flag. That's a test. Lauren is testing you. And, And I think a part of me was so caught up in the mindset of is he testing me or does he genuinely want to get to know me that I kind of lost a little focus at first but then I kind of got back on track and he just asked me similar questions to my godfather Dave except he was more straightforward and kind of business savvy about it he just asked me what are you doing and I was like what and he was like well what are you doing right now and I was like oh Uh, I said I just wrapped up a television show uh, or well, I call it a TV show because the production was that level, even though it was on the internet, uh, on Facebook, on Facebook watch. I told him I had just booked a, a show. I just booked the TBS show like about a month prior, maybe a month and a half. Oh, that's, I forgot about that. That's why I went, not necessarily why I went, but I went from Atlanta to New York because I had to shoot the pilot for the TV show that I was on last year, which was, um, uh, Super Punch on TBS, uh, which was uh, E League Super Punch for those who watched it. Thank you for watching. Uh, it was cool. I had fun. And then um, I just told him, I was like, oh, I got this new TV show I'm about to do on TBS. We're scheduled to do like 28 to 30 episodes this season between 2020 to 2021. And he was like, okay, that's cool. That's good. That's good. He's like, what else are you working on? And I was like, I'm on these two animated shows. And, uh, you know, I was like, I'm doing stand up comedy and this and that. And then he asked me, he asked me, uh, do you only want to do stand-up comedy? And I was like, what do you mean? He was like, and then he referenced Pete Davidson. He's like, well, he's like, well, Pete only wants to do stand-up comedy. And I was like, no, I was like, I'm, I like stand-up comedy. I do, I do as much as I can, but I mean, I'm, I like other stuff too. I like comedic acting and, uh, or excuse me. I was like, I like, uh, theatrical work. I enjoy, uh, voice acting hosting this that that and this and he was like okay that's good that's good that's good and our conversation was a good one i don't like i think if it wasn't good he would have cut it short way earlier but you know he he just kind of asked me like where do i see myself not even in the few years that i guess i not even in the future he was just like what do you see yourself doing and i i think a lot of people in that position because i i asked some friends for some advice before i went in to meet him and I just told him I was like hey I'm meeting with Lauren it's pretty crazy and they were like what oh my god and they were like you gonna try to get on SNL and I was like I don't I don't I don't want to bug him for a job I don't think that's what this is and uh a friend of mine um a comedian my buddy uh Owen Smith he said you know what you should do uh just he's a writer and he's a comedian he's very funny he's been on tv seen him in commercials all over the place uh he was like, he was like, if you do have somewhat of a plan of where you see your future, you should, you should let Lauren know that because people who are already doing stuff respect the fact that you know what you want to do instead of coming in there like, oh, I don't know. Do you have an opportunity for me? <laughs> so I, I went with that mentality because personally, I, I do know what I kind of want to do with my career. I want to, you know, I would love to uh, you know, be on like, uh, 
a, a series, a television series. I'd love to do film and movies. I'd love to eventually uh, direct and even produce. And I currently write stuff, but I haven't like pitched anything big yet. And I would like to host. I I don't know why. After doing this uh, this this game show thing, I just sat back and was like, "Yo, this was fun. It was fun because I got to be myself on camera, and you know, I have a prompter that's kind of like a guideline to keep me going. Not to say I don't like you know the the process of acting and remembering my lines and all that. I still want to do those projects too. But I just I don't know. I could just see myself hosting. Uh, I could just see myself as a late night television host. That's, I don't know if y'all can see it, but I can see it. <laughs> so I, I kind of pitched myself in that light. I told him, and I also mentioned SNL cause I told him, I was like, you know, I would love to, uh, you know, in the future become a host, uh, or maybe, you know, just someone who works a lot in productions like television, animated shows, this and that. I could see myself being like the next uh, Jimmy Fallon or not the next Jimmy Fallon, but whoever would replace him, I guess. Uh, not similar to him. And I told him whether that means coming in here and, you know, uh, you know, putting, putting my, like my, uh, my nose to the dirt, trying to work on SNL as a writer or a actor or a part of the cast or whatever it is. And then working my way pat, you know, through this up until being like a late night host, that'd be great. Um, and I, I just very much laid it out for him. Like, like from one adult to another who knows what's going on with their lives. And he was like, yeah, he was like, he was like, that's cool, man. That's really cool. He was like, you know, uh, he was like, uh, he, he, he was telling me that he was telling me that, um, to do SNL is, is not an easy feat. And I told him, I was like, oh no, I'm very well aware of like what a sketch comedy show is like. I have done the CBS diversity showcase and had done sketch before. And, you know, you got to write every day. Like you're writing, like those people, you know, shout out to my friends who are on the show, uh, Chris Red, um, forget her name uh blah, 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 blah. i should know her name sam J, uh who's a writer and you know the other other a bunch of other people who i genuinely am fans of like uh kyle mooney uh beck bennett from good neighbor if, you, if anybody remembers that oh my god if you remember back in the day of youtube with uh nick rutherford beck bennett <laughs> and and kyle mooney good good neighbor was one of the classic channel um and they were improv guys from ucb they were really funny uh, and still are and everybody else, you know, um, uh, uh, Pete Davidson, everybody they have on their show. Uh, I should know everybody's name. Keenan Thompson, Ego, uh, Melissa Villasenor and all that jazz. Uh, now we're see now that's coming full circle, the conversation. And yeah, we, we, we talked, he offered me popcorn. I said, I said, no, thank you. <laughs> he told me in that moment that he wanted to introduce me to uh, the, uh, president and vice president of his production company, which I did go and have that meeting, which was really good. And, uh, I've been in contact with them for the last year. Things kind of hit like a weird stall once COVID kicked in. And it's definitely like a, uh, like a networking situation where I, I do need to kind of rekindle that kind of connection because unfortunately, like as soon as I, and it's kind of weird. It was like a lot of built up momentum because I had a lot of stuff going on in that time. And then COVID hit in March and then everything kind of flatlined. And I still have like the contacts and all this stuff, but the people are kind of like on to other stuff. And, you know, the momentum of maybe meeting him. I don't think it was going to turn into anything immediately. I think it's definitely like a like a like full circle down the road type of thing. But I'd like to just say I'm one of the very few people who got a chance to sit back and talk with him for like almost an hour about my goals and aspirations while, you know, he's still here working hard on this planet. And I thought that was really cool. Um, but yeah, that was, you know, he, 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 he was like, well, it was, he kind of ended it with, it was really nice meeting you. And he was telling me how, and then he asked me, how long are we going to be in town? And I was like, Oh, we leave Sunday. And he was like, Oh, do you want to come to the taping tomorrow? And I was like, Oh yeah, sure. Oh, I should probably talk about this too. <laughs> uh, he was like, do you want to come to the taping tomorrow? It's the Eddie Murphy episode. And I was like, Oh yeah, me and my wife would come. That'd, that'd be great. So he's like, all right, cool. We'll talk to my assistant on the way out. She'll get you all connected and then we'll work it together. And he was like, and it was great meeting you. And I was like, all right, it's great meeting you too. I felt like it was, a great 
I mean, it wasn't like I, I wasn't uh, I wasn't applying for a job. Like I wasn't interviewing for a job. And I, you know, and I didn't pitch myself in the sense of like, oh, my God, can I please be on SNL? Like if it happens one day, that'd be great. If it doesn't, I don't know. It's all right. Um, but I just I just enjoyed sitting down and talking with someone who I was like, you know, who I, you know, have like definitely looked up to in the last like 10, 10, 15 years as an entertainer. And just sitting there and being able to like rack his brain for a little bit and just have a conversation which was cool and then he invited me to be a part of his whole experience which is the show and we went to the show the following the following evening uh it was pretty cool the interesting part is that when we got there they make you go through security and then they take you to your seats and if you haven't been on the stage of snl which a lot of people haven't it actually is a sound stage so they have like a an area where the crowd sits uh, it was pretty cool. I I bumped past uh, Spike Lee. <laughs> Spike Lee was on my way in there. Um, and then we got in this like normal line, right, to wait to go uh, sit in our seats. And when we showed them our ticket, they actually looked at our ticket and they were like, oh, wait a minute, you're not supposed to be here. And we were like, oh, no. And we were like, oh, we probably got me and my wife were looking at each other. We're like, oh, are they putting us in, in coach. <laughs> they were like, like they're moving us to the back of the plane. Um but what actually happened was the opposite. This uh, assistant of, of the show or maybe like an a, a PA or somebody who worked on the project uh, took us from sitting up in these rafters to actually sitting on the ground floor of the of the um, what is it stage? I should know this stage. I forgot. Is it stage nine or stage? What's it called? I forget. But, uh, you know, wherever they shoot the show. And they put us right on the floor, right where the monologues are done, right in front of you. And it was dope. Eddie Murphy pulled up, and I was like, oh, that's crazy, man. I've met Eddie Murphy before. My parents uh, have had him by the house before because uh, my mom sold art to him. And my dad has worked with him on plenty of projects, Vampire in Brooklyn. Uh, I forgot, A Thousand Words, some other stuff that he's done to get Boomerang, obviously. Um, so, you know. I, I don't know. I don't have a personal connection with Eddie at all, but I have met him. Um, but yeah, it was just so interesting how we went from sitting in what would have been the rafters where everybody was at. And mind you, there's a lot of celebrities up there, but then they were like, Hey, no, you're coming down here to like the VIP. And I was like, Oh, okay. Okay. And then, and mind you, when that happened, my brain started kicking into, Oh, that was a good meeting. JD. Like, cause this is the day after I'm like, Oh, Oh, uh oh, things are cooking. <laughs> I was like, this is actually, I was like, uh oh, things went from zero to 100, brother, real quick. <laughs> oh, man, it was so funny, though. Um, so, and, and also, Lorne is like the coach of SNL. Like, he keeps an eye on all the sketches while they go on every night, uh, every Saturday night. And he was walking around the stage and he kept passing by where me and my wife sitting. And he would like look over at me or look over at me and I would look up at him and he would be like, what's up? With like a, <laughs> with like a head nod. And he was like, he was like, I got you kid. Like, I don't know what it meant. It didn't mean anything, but it was just funny to have him, uh, you know, just kind of acknowledge me after we sat down and talked for like an hour the other day. And then, uh, you know, that, that episode was hilarious. Uh, Dave Chappelle was there. Chris Rock was there. Tracy Morgan um, and then after that, we were invited to the after party, which was at this like uh, lounge slash restaurant place. And uh, yeah, that was it. I, I ran into a bunch of celebrities. They they have no idea who I am. Um, some of them, I guess I knew some of the people there. I'm not going to act like I didn't know anyone. I made a few connections, but it's like, you know, it's you know, I don't know. I'm not. You know, <laughs> like I think the only the only person I really sat back and talked to, I told I I tapped Eddie Murphy on his shoulder when I passed by him at the after party because he sent roses to my dad's funeral. I just told him, thank you. Uh, I ran into Dave Chappelle and Chappelle recognized me because I bump into him at comedy clubs all the time. And I was like, how like. Well, he kind of recognized me. I'm not going to act like he was like, oh, what up, Spoon? <laughs> he he does call me that, though, because, uh, like, the first time I ever met him, and that's another fun story I should tell you. When I was 15, I met him. Oh, my God, that was such a dope story. Um, but I bumped into him at the at the comedy store and the Laugh Factory before, and, uh, you know, he was there. Keegan-Michael Key was there. Uh, Donald Glover was there, which was cool. And now I feel like this is becoming, like, a gaudy celebrity story. But these are just people that I thought were cool. Um, 
I sat back and spoke with Michael Che for a little bit, and he was we, we laughed and talked about stuff, which was great. And I uh, saw the homie Chris Red um, and a bunch of other people. And yeah, and then me and my wife, I think we, we headed out. Uh, I think we grabbed like a slice of pizza somewhere in New York, and then we were heading out the next day to go home. And it was fun. It was fun. It was a really cool, uh, very interesting uh, event. And yeah, that's where, and that's where, that's where we ended, I guess. Cause that now I don't know what to talk about. Maybe this episode is going to be just a specific, maybe this is like a, I don't know what this is. Cause now I just talked about stuff that <laughs> have nothing to do with, with, uh, it's like a story time episode. All right. Should I even answer questions? How about I'll save a Q and a for the next episode? Uh, cause I feel like it's a good spot to wrap up here. Uh, please though, leave me some questions on the anchor app. The link is in the description below. If you're listening to this, the link is right there in front of you in the uh, show notes, you can click it and you can go leave a voice message on the anchor app. But yeah, that is the story of how I met Lauren Michaels. Uh, yeah, I think I'll title the video something like that. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It was cool. It was a very cool experience. And, uh, who knows? Maybe between now and the next decade, your boy is able to collaborate in some realm with Lorne Michaels, whether it's a television show he's producing with his company or a movie, or maybe I get an audition for SNL. I have submitted tapes for SNL. I, I don't think I've, I don't think I've mentioned that. Uh, I could show them to you all. <laughs> I have them on my hard drives. Uh, they're, oh, they're funny, you know. It's like me doing characters and impressions and submitting. But those go through like the ringer and so many people uh, are either like looked over or or get a call back or something like that. So when I got the opportunity to sit down with them, all I could think was like, this has got to be way better than than like him watching my audition tape. I'm actually getting a chance to meet him and have a personal conversation with him. I'm sure he'll remember this way more than he will a three minute tape of me doing some stupid impressions who knows i'm not sure i should follow up and say hi again i'm gonna i'm probably gonna follow up this week <laughs> um but yeah maybe you know what i think maybe i'll upload this one I, i'm not sure when i'm upload this episode but it'll be a fun little bonus episode and if you want more like this i have a lot of stories from my childhood till now not just about celebrity things but things i've been through in my personal life so if that's something that you're into uh let me know and i am with that going to skip over this royal wedding conversation burger king myers My, myers leonard is what i wrote down and the q a portion at the end uh we will talk about that maybe on the next episode let's get the feedback on this one and tell me what you think about this and uh if and hey uh maybe i'll just go through my archives of story times and i can talk to you about them i used to do a lot of story times on my gaming channel uh, and I can retell those stories so you all can hear them in their like full, what's it called? I don't know. Validity? Is that the word? I don't know. Uh, that was fun though. I enjoyed that. That was, that was very actually therapeutic. I was not feeling great prior to this podcast, but now I feel pretty good. I also did take a number two. So it might've just been that I needed to do a stress poop. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. With that being said, I'll talk to you. All right. Uh, I will catch you on the next one. If you enjoyed this, hey, remember to rate, uh, share, subscribe on whatever audio platforms that you listen to. If you're listening to this, be sure to watch the video here on YouTube. And um, yeah, you know, subscribe on all platforms. Patreon, I got more content coming for you. And I will I will catch you all on the next one. There's not much else to say. All right. That was it. That's the story of how I met Lauren Michaels. All right. I will catch you on the next one. Goodbye.